Hi everybody, today I am going to show you five really easy stitches for your slow stitching projects. Hello again everybody, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. Thank you for tuning in today. So we're going to look at some slow stitching and I want to show you, as I mentioned, five easy stitches to use in your projects. If you don't know what slow stitching is and you're a bit confused about that, I do have this piece here and I talk all about the intricacies <laughs> of slow stitching, what it is, um, how you can do it, why you should do it as well. I think everybody should be doing this. So do go and check that video out. I'll put a link up here in the corner and in the description below the video if you're watching on your TV. So go and watch that um, video and see all about this beautiful technique. But I want to just concentrate on a few stitches that you can use in your projects in this video. So the cameras and the lighting that I'm using today is all possible thank you to the people who support our channel, our channel members and our patrons and those of you who have clicked the super thanks button, thank you very much. So this week Anna, Elizabeth, Margaret, Carmela, Margaret again and another Elizabeth too. Thank you guys so much for your support, it's really appreciated um, and I can see nice and clearly what I'm doing. Thanks, um, thanks to you. So this is the piece from the slow stitching and what is it video and how to do it. So um, I've actually picked the same colours to do the five stitches in and um, quite by accident I'm completely colour coordinated today. That doesn't happen very often and it wasn't planned, that's for sure. So I'm going to show you the five stitches on here. They're easy, easy stitches. So if you've not done much stitching or you're new to stitching, just beginning your stitching journeys, then um, these are super easy. You'll be able to do these. There's a couple of variations um, of some of them as well. So I'm going to show you um, more than one way that you can use the stitch and that will instantly give you more things to choose from. But the thing I need to do first is we need to um, get all our materials held together. So I've just done some layers here. Um, I've got my backing fabric. Um, got one on top that I'm sort of working on top. I've just put another colour behind and just laid a few things up. That's all explained in that video that I've mentioned already. So do go check that one out. And I'm going to do it on these little squares so you can see the samples. But you need to hold these squares together so you can stitch on them. Now, sometimes these stitches will do that holding together for you. So you can just pin them in place like I've done here if you want to. And then you can go straight in and stitch on that. Or you can tack the pieces together or baste the pieces together, depending on where you are in the world. Um, with a thread and I have done that and that means you can take all your pins away and you're not fighting with your pins so I'm just going to show you quickly how to do that so that you have got both options so you can leave it pinned if you want to or you can just use a normal sewing cotton it's one of these just a machine sew all thread and it doesn't matter what colour because you're going to take these out afterwards so I've done this section here and all I've done is started here a massive running stitch through all these layers back and forth like so and I'm just going to start here so I've got a little knot in the back we're going to cut this out so you don't need to start and finish it properly and it's just a huge running stitch through it so you want to hold down anything that's loose and so just going to go in the end of that up into that backing fabric there and then back up into the corner of this one and just great big stitches right the way across doesn't matter if you change direction it doesn't have to look beautiful it's all coming out it's just to hold all these pieces together while you do your slow stitching so it's optional and sometimes I get a little bit lazy and I think oh, I'll just do it with the pins but actually <laughs> it is nicer to to do this because you've got a proper piece of fabric if, to work on if you like. I haven't got any pins sticking out. You can use those little clips as well that they use in quilting if you want to, but you do fight those as well. The thread does get caught. When you've got piece held in, you can take those pins out. I'm just going back the other way catch the corner of that in and that corner as well. That's all you need to hold it at the top. You haven't got to go all the way around the squares or anything like that. Take that pin out. Just going to go right along that edge now. And when you get to the end, just go over a couple of times 
just so it doesn't come undone you can take all your pins out and then you've just got this nice piece of fabric everything's sort of held together um, and you can work on that without worrying about sticking any pins in your fingers so now we've got all the layers together let's look at our first stitch so the first stitch we're going to look at is a super easy running stitch really great for all um, your slow stitching project and I'm going to use a stranded cotton to demonstrate with you can use any thread that you like for slow stitching um, but this is quite a good one just to demonstrate with and I've just got three strands in the needle so you can see what I'm doing put a little knot in the end and I'm going to hide the knot between the layers of the fabric so I'm going behind that backing fabric I'm going to come up in the corner of my first square and that knot is trapped I'll just get that through there is trapped between the layers just a little tug there it's underneath the layers it's not going to come undone and I can just start my stitching now ignore any of these basting stitches you can take them out as you go if you like we can take them all out afterwards I'm just going to do this running stitch and I'm going to go all the way around the square so you can use the running stitch to hold a little piece of fabric in place if you've attached one on top you've got a little piece and you want to um, sew that down you can just do the running stitch all the way around the edge now you can do it two ways you can either go down through the back and then back up to the front like so but because we're holding it in a hand we can do like a continuous method so we can go into the fabric pick up a little bit of it and come out on the front so you're not turning your fabric over you haven't got to wrestle with the fabric so down and up so turn that round it's fabric we can scrunch it up so down into the fabric and just a little bit of a gap so it's better if the stitch is longer on the top and shorter underneath so you've got more of the stitch showing on the top and I'm just going all the way around the edge of the square don't go right to the square because if it frays it's going to come out turn it around again so just make it um, as easy as possible to work on if you need to move your piece around to make it easier then move it around you're not in a frame so that's the advantage of working in your hand now is that you can adjust it to the position that's most comfortable for you and you can see that stitch going all the way around the edge don't worry about the neatness slow stitching so slow stitching is a mindful embroidery technique it's about how the fabrics and the threads feel in your fingers and it's about enjoying the actual act of stitching and not really worrying about what it is you're making the neatness will come if you're worried about that but just enjoy the actual stitching so i'm back to the and there I've been all the way around my little circle with my running stitch I'm going to take it through to the back and if you want to finish off that thread just do a little stitch over where you finished just through that backing fabric a couple of times one more in a different direction you can cut that off and it's nice and neat on the back it's not going to come undone and that's super easy most simplest stitch you can do is just that plain running stitch so there's a couple of other ways that you can use your running stitch and um, depending on what it is you're stitching down and what effect that you want to have so we're just going to have a quick look at those now i'm going to use a variegated thread for this one just to swap it up a bit because we're going to do more stitches now that's just a single stitch around um this square here and this one we're going to go in lines across it so we're going to see more of the threads so i'm going to use this variegated thread if you want to know about variegated threads do check out our video all about that what they are and how you can use them because they're really quite exciting threads i do love them so i'm going to use that for this and again i've got three strands I want to know how to put a knot in the end by the way just put it on your finger needle goes over the end of the thread once twice round pull the thread back down and the needle back up then you make a little knot between your fingers that's the easiest way to get a nice um <clears throat> a nice flat knot not something that's really bulky underneath so i'm going to, just going to start between the bits of fabric and up in well actually I'm going to start just outside the square this time now this is really good if you have a fabric that frays quite a little bit or um, you've got a hole in the fabric if it's a bit of a delicate fabric and you've got a hole and you want to repair it you can just stitch, stitch straight over it so this is really good for that so I'm actually going to turn it that way around and exactly the same stitch that I've done before but I'm going to do rows of them now and I'm going to go back and forth 
across that fabric. So I'm still doing it in that one movement. You can do it in two movements if you want to. Right to the end. And I'm going to go off the end this time. I'm going to come back down the other way. And go back across. So you're holding the fabric down with a lot more stitching now. It makes it much more secure because I'm using that variegated thread and getting that really nice effect as well. So again, we're going to go back off the edge of it like so. Turn my fabric round. Can we go out a bit further if you want to? You can do your rows a bit closer together if you want more interest in it. You can see these edges, especially on this kind of fabric, they fray really easily. You can see how easily that's coming off. So this stitch will just help with frayed fabrics just to keep them under control a little bit and stop them falling apart. So one more running stitch variation for you. Again, it's going to be another one that fills in the shape, but we're going to make it into a circle. So we're going to do some slow stitch spirals. So I'm actually going to start in the middle for this. You can do this two ways. You can either start in the middle or you can start on the edge and come in towards the middle. If you want a nice round circle, I suggest starting on the edge. If you're happy just to see where it goes, start in the middle. I'm just going to do a tiny little stitch. This is still running stitch, no different at all. But we're just going to go round in a little circle now. So just imagine it like that. You can't really draw this on because you... Um, it's running stitch, you'll have a gap and you'll be able to see what you've drawn unless you use an erasable pen, which you could do and you could erase that off afterwards. But it's quite nice just to let it form itself really. So we're just going to do kind of a little triangle of stitches first, like so. And then we're just going to keep going now around the outside. And I think once you've started this, it'll just do its own thing so you don't need to worry about it. it's just getting it going and you can see I'm going in and out of the fabric now just got a bit more control initially about where my stitches sit but once you pick up a bit of a pace you can start doing that running method and you'll think I can't see the spiral what's she talking about it will come I promise you You'll be able to see it in a second. And you can make your stitches a little bigger as you go round. If you're not confident with that, you do it in the two movements. You come up and down. It's a little bit harder to do it under the camera like this because I would normally have it a bit closer to me. So I should go back to this method, but you do the one that you find most comfortable. And just round and round in a circle. This one looks really nice in the variegated thread as well. It changes colour all the way through. And again, just move your fabric round as you stitch. This shouldn't be a chore. You shouldn't be getting cross with this or <laughs> frustrated or fighting your fabric and your materials. You should be enjoying the process. So move it if it's not comfortable. I would normally work a lot closer to me than I am under the camera. So if you need to move it nearer to you so you can see it a bit better, then do that. So you can see that spiral starting to come now. So I'm going to go right to the edge of this fabric and maybe just off it as well. So just like that previous one, it's just catching all the fabric down um, and continue with my slow stitch spiral. So you can see the spiral now. I've just taken it off the edge of that fabric, just really nice and secure. And again, it feels really wonderful as well. And if you wanted to do a square spiral, you do a square spiral. I don't know. So like the first one we did, and start around the edge and you could just keep going in towards the middle. Yeah, that's a square spiral. Um, and do one that way. So there's loads of opportunities um, to use this super simple stitch. Um, so I hope that's given you some ideas about how you can use it. OK, so let's switch things up a little bit and do two stitches at once. So we're just going to do a cross stitch. So if you're used to doing cross stitch, you might be used to doing all of the bottom stitches one way and then coming back and doing the other ones. We're going to do whole cross stitches now and I'm going to do it over the edge of the fabric. Now you can just see how that one's beginning to fray. So let's catch that in. So um, we're just going to use the cross stitch all the way around the edge to hold our fabric down. So I'm going to do 
that way first. I'm going to go across and do that way. Now again, you can go through to the back and do them individually. So I'll show you what one looks like. Do them quite big so you can see them. You can do them a little bit finer if you want to. So we're going to go diagonally there. If I come up there, it's ready for the next one. I can go over there, down there, and come back up in the next position. And you can see how those stitches are holding down my fabric now. If you had a nice pattern on this fabric and you wanted to see the pattern, you could just do this around the edge so it's holding that fabric in place. Let's see if we can get one on the corner. Just about. That one will go into that corner, like so. And then I can just continue across the bottom. So do it again in two movements if you're not confident with it or just the one over there. Finish the cross off, bring your needle up where you want your next cross to start. I'm going to turn this around, which is going to be there. And then I can just work all the way around with those cross stitches. And I'll finish that one off and then I'll just show you one more thing you can do with these stitches. So that's cross stitches all the way around the edge to hold the fabric down. But you can do the same as we did with the running stitch. And if you want to, um, hold the fabric down more securely if it's fraying you can put the cross stitches inside so I'm going to do that now and I'm going to do them a little bit smaller now I'm going to do them quite randomly as well so I can jump around a little bit so you can put them where you want if you've got a pattern on it you could incorporate them into the pattern you could avoid the pattern go in between the pattern so wherever you want to put them now, and you can see I'm doing them in that one movement as well. So first one, finish the cross, bring your needle up where you want to start the next one. Do them a little bit smaller. You could mix them up with your running stitch as well. So you can see how these stitches can start to change just a little bit to be to make a nice pattern in your slow stitching. If you're new to stitching, you don't have many stitches at your fingertips, then this is a great one to have. You can see how quickly they go in as well. <laughs> nice and quick. Let's jump over there and put one right in the middle. Uh, let's go that way. It's kind of gone against the grain, but you know, we're slow stitching. I don't care. <laughs> I'm enjoying the stitching, which is what it's about. So I just, <clears throat> if you're wondering what I did then, I just did that um, cross the other way around. If you're a hardened cross stitcher, you might have gasped at that. You try and keep your cross stitches going the same way, but it really doesn't matter with slow stitching. It's not about accuracy, neatness. It's about enjoying the process. So last one there. Not going to go over the edge. You could do one over the edge here and one over the edge here as well if you wanted to keep um, to keep these edges from fraying a little bit. So you could um, put some extra ones in. But I'm just going to stop there so you can see what that looks like. So there is another version of cross stitch. So the third stitch that I'm going to show you um, again, it's got two variations, and we're going to look at some seeding. Now the super super easy stitch. They're all super super easy. <laughs> Um, so we're going to do single seeding and double seeding. Not so easy to say. And we're going to fill in the shape again. You can go over the edges as before. You can just stay inside the shape. And now what you want to do with these is just change direction. So it's just a little straight stitch. It's all it is. It's like a single running stitch if you like, but not running in a line. We're just going to do them quite randomly. So they're good if you just make them different pointing in different directions. So let's go up there with that one. We could do that one in that direction. This one could go vertically up. Turn that around. Be 
you can put them as close together as you want you can make them any size you want if you do them too small they tend to disappear a little bit in the layers of the fabric but you make them the size you want for the project that you're working on you can see how they are looking just little little seeds little seed stitches Again, you can go over the edge as well. Let's just do a couple over the edge so you can see that. You've got a little bit you want to just catch in. You can do that. I do one in the corner as well. So I'm going to finish that square off and then I'll show you some double seeding. So it'll be no surprise to you that double seeding is the same as we've just done but with two stitches instead of one. And this can just add a little bit more detail and again I'm using that variegated thread so hopefully those colours are going to come out nice and randomly in that. So I'm just going to do two little stitches next to each other, try and make them the same length and going in the same direction. And there's all sorts of patterns you can do with seeding. You could do little triangles, you could do little squares. But this is the easiest one. And it's just like two little running stitches next to each other, really. So you can just practice doing your nice little neat stitches. Now, the more stitching you do, the neater it will become. So don't force it. Just keep putting stitches in and the rest will come. Don't be taking anything out on slow stitching. <laughs> Put stitches in, don't take them out. See that? So I've just made them a little bit smaller now, group them together a little bit. You could um, group them in a corner if you like. You could do them all in the corners, spread them out a bit as you go along. You could do them evenly as I am doing. Don't worry too much about the gaps in between. And it is a little bit easy with this one to go in and out. Um, the angle of the needle does affect where stitches sit. So if you do that running method with this one, you can see that stitch there has gone a little tiny stitch. So it is a bit easier if you just come up and do it in two movements rather than one up and straight back down. Up and straight back down. See that other colour coming into it. So that's what that one looks like. Let's finish that square off. So let's just have a little look at what that looks like. And you can see I've changed the direction as I had with the single ones as well. Each time just makes them look a little bit more random. And I just want to show you the back very quickly on that. And I've gone in quite a logical order across it. Don't jump from one side of the square to the other. You end up with the long stitches on the back and they can come undone and get caught on things. And you lose a, use a lot of thread as well. So I've just worked my way around, worked up the up the square and it's nice and secure on the back and it looks really nice on the front so stitch number four so stitch number four we are going to do some satin stitch um again a few variations of this so i'm going to show you a couple of those so we're going to do some little satin stitch blocks now now they don't have to be super neat if you've done any satin stitch before you've seen it and you're panicking <laughs> it can be a bit tricky it's like the little seeding stitches, but just next to each other. So just some little satin stitch blocks. Don't worry about if they're not quite the same length. Or well, there's a little gap in between. Let's do a couple more. Let's do four. What does that look like? That's quite nice. So they're kind of like, a, I suppose, a big seeding, really. And again, I'm going to change the direction of them. just scatter them about. Now these can be nice in the slow stitching for um, covering up an edge. I'll show you an edge in a second or putting a little bit of detail on it or if you need some part of it where you need a little bit more stitching just to make it a bit more solid. This is quite solid stitching now and I'll show you an edge as well. So if you wanted to go over an edge this could be the edge of your piece of fabric. You could go just all the way around the edge. So this is a nice one if you've got an edge that's out of control <laughs> and you need to bring it under control. You can just do this little group around here and I'm going to show you some pieces. 
at the end with a few of these stitches in you can see how I've actually used them in pieces of slow stitching so I will show you that but you can go over the edge with this and just make a little block of stitches stitches all go in the same direction they lie next to each other and if you want to you can go all the way around the edge now it does take a lot more thread it takes a bit longer so if those things are important hang on for the next version of satin stitch but you can just make that really solid block of stitching and you can do small stitches as well you make a little smaller edging and you can see I'm doing this in the two movements as well it's a little bit easy again that needle angle will mess up the stitch length a little bit so I suggest you do this one in the two movements so I've just got a little fine edge there now so if you want a smaller one you can have a smaller one so you can do that on the edge and then we'll go back to our blocks we could do little small blocks as well you can change the scale to whatever size you want to do if you've got a thicker thread you could do larger ones, you've got a nice fine thread, you can do nice fine ones. So all of these stitches are really versatile depending on what thread you want to use and what project you're creating. So little tiny blocks as well. So that's probably satin stitch in its most traditional sense. And these little blocks of stitches, same direction, nice and close to each other. And you can do it in the middle or on the edge. So I've done a few more little blocks on that. Some on the edges, some in the middle. I've done a little small block of satin stitch there. I've done one right up to the corner. So if you want to get these corners held down, a bit worried that they might come apart, you can go right up to the corner as well. So let's look at just another variation of that now. This isn't really, I suppose, technically satin stitch, but it's made the same way. So I'm going to call it satin stitch. And we're going to do slightly more open stitches now. But I found in my slow stitching, this one comes in really useful. <laughs> quite a lot of the time so I'm going to come over the edge and I'm going to do little kind of <clears throat> little blocks of them but different lengths now so they're going to all sit next to each other but you can just see making that different length so if you've got a bit of fabric that you want to catch in you can change the length of your stitch to catch it in you don't have to have them all the same length and if I jump over here I can do another one over here. I could make that really long come out into this fabric here. You haven't just got to stick to the little bit of fabric that you're applying. You could just do this right in the middle of a piece of fabric. You haven't got to do it on an edge at all. So you could take one long one into there and just come over the edge there. So you can make them whatever length that you like. You can put as many stitches in there as you like just swap it up a little bit they're still sort of next to each other making a block but we're just making different lengths of it now like so right one more thing i want to show you with this and this is the one that comes into a lot is to change the angle of it so we're going to go do diagonal ones now across here now satin stitch is always a little bit better if you do it diagonal if you do traditional satin stitch diagonal is usually the way you do it but i'm going to do these ones open because i've got lots of fabric here i want to catch down i've got this white one i've got this pink one across here i've got the two background fabrics i'm going to do some great big stitches across here now and i'm going to have a gap between them so i suppose this one is the one that's technically probably not satin stitch don't tell anyone I won't if you won't and you can just put big stitches in and it can hold all these pieces of fabric together and it's just a really useful <laughs> stitch when it comes to getting your fabrics to stay together and you can go right up to the corner and you can go right down over a corner as well it's a lot quicker too so a version, my version of a satin stitch. Um, so just the little blocks with the different length stitches. So you can catch in whatever fabric and thread you want to. And then these nice big diagonal ones to hold all your fabric together and just give you a slightly different pattern from your running stitch. So that's two versions of satin stitch. 
So the final stitch, I'm going to switch it up a little bit because so far all of our stitches have just consisted of one single stitch. Sometimes we've put them together in a block, sometimes we've done them in a long row. Um, but this time I am going to do one with a few more movements in it. So slightly more complicated, but a really great one to learn for your slow stitching projects. So those stitches, I've got two of them, but they're formed the same way, but they're slightly different in the way we put them down, are blanket stitch and a buttonhole stitch. We're going to do blanket stitch first and buttonhole is the same but we're going to squash it up a bit. So let's just start with a blanket stitch. I'm going to start underneath here. And what you want to do is to start on the outside. You're going to start at the bottom of where your blanket stitch is going to sit. So this is a really good one for going around the edge. You can also do this stitch in the middle but it is a good one for the outside. So I'm going to come down into my fabric and then up next to where I came out and do this in one movement. If I just pull it slowly, so you'll see that there's a, a loop there and a kind of, let's get rid of that bit. There's a loop and I'm coming up inside of the loop and I'm going to pull it towards the outside of the square. Now blanket stitch has a gap in it, so we're going to jump over there now. I'm going to do the same, take a little stitch, you can see that loop there. And just tension it to the outside and you'll see it does a kind of row of stitching along the bottom and it has these little arms that come up. When you get to a corner, you can just go round the corner I'll do it again a few times, don't worry if you're not following it. So inside that loop, and then if you want to turn the corner, you can go back into where that one sits in the fabric, come out at the corner, and you make like a little triangle. It's exactly the same stitch. If I turn it again, I'm going to go back into that one and come out in the fabric. Now we do have a video on how to turn corners with stitches and this one is in there. So if you want this in a little bit more detail, do check that video out. Now I can just go in a straight line. So it's one movement, but I'm kind of forming this looped stitch. So it's a little bit more complicated than the ones we have done so far. But as I said, one that's definitely worth learning and it goes in nice and quick. Look at that beautiful edge that it makes as well. So little stitch that way inside that loop. And this is the important bit. If you're getting near to the end of the thread and you want to finish it, you've got to finish off that stitch at the moment. That is loose, that loop is loose. So we've got to do a stitch over that. Pull that down slowly. Hopefully you can see that nice and clearly. I'm gonna pull that loop down and finish it. That's really important. If you don't do that bit, your stitch will come out. And then again, just finish as normal on the back. like so. So that is my blanket stitch. I'm going to go all the way around the edge with that one. So we looked at blanket stitch, let's look at buttonhole stitch. So formed in exactly the same way, but now the stitches are going to be right next to each other. So a little bit like your satin stitch blocks. And this is obviously from when people hand stitch their buttonholes on their clothes for the buttons to go through. Um, but it is a really beautiful stitch and again, really good if you want to make the edge nice and secure and nice and solid and you want a bit more stitching in there. So exactly the same as before, come up in the outside here, well, the, the bottom, let's say the bottom where you want that line of stitching to go. I'm going to come inside and out next to it. And I'm going to do these stitches next to each other so we get this really solid piece of stitching. You can vary the lengths if you want to. They don't have to be the same length. And there's loads of variations of buttonhole stitch. We have a video on a few of those as well. You can do lots of things with this stitch. So once you've learnt the basic principles of it, go and check that one out and see what else you can do with it because suddenly you'll have a load more stitches at your fingertips that you didn't know you could do. So you can see how that's sort of creating that nice satin stitch look, but with that little decorative edge on it. I'll just do a couple more. You can go around the corner in exactly the same way as we did before with this. So I'm just going to do that much 
and then I will finish that off. But I just want to show you one more thing. Let's park that there. And um, I just want to show you one in the middle of the fabric. So you can make nice shapes with this stitch as well. I'm going to do a great big circle in the middle. So I'm coming up on what will be the outside of my circle. Decide where the middle is. There. And then I'm going to come out inside the loop. So this one's a little bit more of a probably a blanket stitch than a buttonhole stitch. But I'm going to use that centre each time and just turn myself around. You can draw a circle in if you want to for this one. middle of the circle out to the edge so it's close together at the top but there's a little bit wider apart at the bottom so it's kind of a mix of the two really I suppose don't worry about what it's called <laughs> just enjoy stitching one down in the middle to the edge so a really nice decorative way of using this stitch now so you can use it for the edges to make your edges nice and secure or you can put nice big buttonhole circles on your slow stitched pieces and it's a really nice way of filling in that little empty bit if you've got a bit of fabric that's not got a pattern or anything on it stick some of these in it so I'll go all the way around and then I'll just show you how to finish that off and then we'll have a look at those together so I've gone all the way round. I just want to show you how to finish it off um, to join that circle up. So we talked about having to catch that down and then we just did the line we went down at the end there. But just connect it up to that stitch where you started just to complete the circle now. Like so. And there's our circle finish. So I'm going to go around the whole of the edge with this and then we'll have a look at what the whole thing looks like. So that's my little sampler finished of my five easy stitches for slow stitching and you can see from it how five stitches can easily turn into what looks like 10 stitches, <laughs> twice as many stitches in there just with those few simple stitches and changing your thread up and just changing the way that you do them. So I hope you found that um, interesting and helpful and are ready to jump into some slow stitching now that you know those so what I would do with this now is I would just put a bit more stitching in it because I've got this um, these layers at the edge that aren't held down only held down with the basting at the moment so I would put one of these stitches maybe some running stitch around the edge and maybe do a little bit more in the middle and work on that a little bit more and then when you're happy that all your fabrics are held down you can take those basting stitches out it's always best to do it from the back I would cut from the back and you can just find one of them get your scissors underneath and then you can just pull out the basting stitches from underneath like so they come out quite easily because we did nice big stitches so you can take all of those out and you've just got your fabric left and you can have a little play so before you go <laughs> I want to show you a couple of pieces that I have used these stitches in just to see where you can take this so just looking at the running stitch only, this whole piece is done just with that running stitch, just the back and forth that we did in that second little sample. And I've just used some nice complementary fabrics. I've got black and black, navy blue and um, a kind of creamy white colour. And I've got one with spots on one with little stars on it. And I've just layered those up and you can see those on the back as well as a different one on the back. And you can see the stitches quite clearly. This is a traditional um, piece that they would make in Japan and they would layer their old fabrics together and reuse them and put all those old ones that have got the holes in them on top and just stitch over them and create a new piece of cloth so you can make a very beautiful thing just with the running stitch on its own and just a couple of fabrics for that so this one has got most of the stitches that I have just done in it what with my scissors so I'll just point a few of them out so we've got the running stitch all the way around that edge there and it goes all the way up to the end of the blue there's a little bit of the blanket stitch around the corner then I've gone around the corner with that some more running stitch to hold the lace on some of that open satin stitch that we did it's quite good for connecting two different fabrics up or covering up a join so there's a little bit of that down there there's some cross stitch here some tiny little cross stitches that I've done in the in the check so they're teeny tiny ones and just done that over and that's holding that down nicely we've got some of the double seeding over here the two seeding together and I've packed those in quite tightly and again that gives it a really nice feel I wish you could feel these pieces because they feel beautiful um, we've got a little bit of the blanket stitch around here as well a bit more of that satin and there is if you can see it or not some of the block satin around here very small just gone over the edge of that lace nice tiny stitches nice and close to each other to make a really solid piece of stitching and there's some of that running stitch back and forth 
across the fabric as well. You can still see the pattern through it. I've picked a colour that's in the fabric so you can see the fabric that comes through. So you can see how easily you can make really beautiful pieces with these simple stitches, just adding some interesting materials on as well. And let's just take that to one more level up. And I made these beautiful little pieces. Now I hope you can see that these are flower pots. <laughs> It's a little flower pot there and some flowers in them but don't look at that and panic think I can't do that because it's exactly the same as we have just done so let's look at this bigger one first so I've got this on a piece of felt backing but I've got my fabrics behind that I've just layered up so rather than now the little squares where I've done the samples I've overlapped them a little bit and you can make some really interesting compositions you can use up all those leftover bits of fabric and you can see the running stitch here doing this amazing fluorescent um, thread which I think is fabulous I love it and I've done the running stitch all the way around the outside change the color here um where else have I got the running stitch is a little bit behind that silk there holding that on this red one comes down here so you've changed the color changed the bits of fabric as well put more pieces of fabric on there and use that running stitch to hold it down there's some of it that goes back and forth making that really nice solid bit here there's some double seeding here there's some of the single seeding. I've used all the stitches I've used in the sampler in this. And um, there's my little cross stitches there. This is my satin stitch, my block satin stitch around the edge. Got some of that open satin stitch here. Now that worked really well just to bring these two fabrics together. This green one hadn't been held down and just the edge of this sort of denim. And I've just done it over the two and that's making that really secure and holding that down nice and tightly. And there's a little bit more under here as well this open I'm going to swap that out of the way there so this open satin stitch here so exactly the same stitches we've just done again swapping the fabrics up and I've added a touch more detail to this one I've cut these out of a piece of lace these little flowers and I've just stitched them down in the middle with a couple of beads to hold them down so they're three-dimensional here and I put some of those beads up here a little row up here as well and I put it a little bow to finish it off I like my little bows <laughs> So um, that's where you can take this just with those stitches. And there's a little tiny one as well that I have done. You can see it in the size of my hand. And I've got all those stitches. Well, most of those stitches that we've done in here. So there's my satin stitch. There's my running stitch. A couple of cross stitches. Some more cross stitches there. Blanket stitch around the edge of the flower pot. Um, I put my beads on as well. There's a bit of um, buttonhole stitch in there. And a little bit of seeding in the green as well. So just a few examples of where you can take these very simple stitches to make yourself some beautiful pieces. So grab yourself a few threads and some nice fabrics and do have a go at these stitches. They really are very easy. You don't have to worry about how neat and tidy you make it. And if you're enjoying these stitches and you've got the hang of them and you think, oh yeah, I'd really like to learn some more, do check out our playlist over here with loads of different stitches in it, our Stitch Library playlist. Those are in... Um, very good detail and you can see how to do some more stitches and you can add some more stitches to your slow stitching and if you've enjoyed this video do give it a thumbs up that's always appreciated and I will see you next time.